Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Tom Stewart here. I'm with Liz Trotter. Hey, Liz. Hey, y'all. And today is Monday, June 1st. I had a meeting this morning and Troy, one of, one of our partners said, happy June, everybody. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever had anybody wish me happy June before. But I can kind of understand why, though. <laughs> like, it kind of feels ooh, good. So, yeah. so happy June. Yeah. Rata May, yay, yay for us. <laughs> uh, it was it was kind of a long, long, but too short of a weekend for me too. <laughs> like, uh, I, I kind of feel like I, I needed today off as Were well. Were you, you busy this weekend, Liz? I was. I had a busy weekend. How about you, Tom? Were you busy this weekend? Were yeah. you just playing with your dog all all the whole time? No, oh, we had a little dog time for sure. Um, but we were busy. We were busy. Always something to be busy with, you know. Well, you still have kids at home, so that that changes things a lot, you know. Uh, is Kate still home right now? No, she actually um, she has an apartment in Greenville, not Greenville, in in Clemson, and she um, she took off this weekend, and she's she's going to be hanging out there for a while. Yay! Yeah, I'm good sorry. for her. You know, yeah, she's a, a very independent child and living. She's 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 beyond the uh, you know, a visit is good, but she needs her space. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm one of those people, too. We were talking about that today in uh, an MMA group. Like one of our members had uh, had to drop someone off at the hospital. <laughs> She was like, it was so sad. I was so felt so bad that I couldn't go in with. I was like, I'm kind of loving that right now. <laughs> I'm kind of loving like like some of the stuff is easier and the drive through or not drive through drive by birthday parties. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm kind of loving those too. I'm not really a fan of having to go. Gosh, I'm sad about this that I'm like this, but I don't really like to go to little kids' birthday parties. It's just not really very fun for me, but and sometimes they're sort of expected. Uh, but I have gone to three now of these drive-by birthday parties, and I gotta say, I hope these stay with us forever. I love them. I just drop the I, the present off to the kid, wave happy birthday, and the kid is happy. I'm happy. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> yeah, it's been nice. You're on the speaker phone the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> I feel bad. <laughs> I don't know. For me, it's been kind of nice. But I know for a lot of the extroverts out there in the world, they're like, oh, I'm not getting enough time with people. It's awful. I'm guessing yeah. it's very similar to how I feel when I have to spend too much time with people. <laughs> I just need a break. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm having a hard time relating to. I'm I'm I guess I'm cut out for this whole social distancing quarantine yeah. type thing. I yeah. could do this forever. Me too. It's not causing me any any problems at all. It's making things easier for me. So the only thing that is a little bit difficult are some of our meetings i'm an introvert my life hasn't changed much <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh, that's that's true sarah I, I i do miss the restaurants i know tom doesn't even miss the restaurants he's like Neh. but janice is a really good cook so that that if i had a really good cook like if janice moved here mm -hmm. and was taking care of me yeah i probably wouldn't miss restaurants either <laughs> no that's not happening yeah i didn't kind of figure that was happening but you never know. You can dream. I, I don't think I would miss restaurants either if I had Janice. Like, and and the food is ready for you when you come home from work. That's even easier, and don't have to go anywhere. But you know, I've been working a lot from home, so we've been, you know, she's been busy working on PHC, and I've, I've spent my fair share in the kitchen. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I, I don't think I I know that you cook because I know you cook breakfast and stuff, but I'm not sure I've ever eaten anything that you cook. Oh yeah, maybe did you make those eggs in a hole that one time? 
I've never had that. That's rocking, wasn't it? It was good, actually. I, I have to say it was good. And I had never heard of it or had it. So I was like, what are we eating? <laughs> Eggs and a what? <laughs> Even if, you, even if you weren't cooking, though, just getting something out of the freezer and cleaning up afterwards, it's its a lot of work. Yeah, it is. Even if the food is already cooked, like you said, grabbing it out of the freezer, microwave it, and it's just, a, that's why restaurants are nice. And the food is yummy. It's different food than you have at home all the time. I'm like, oh, I love that. <laughs> I love um, Sarah. I love to keep the booze to go at restaurants. So <laughs> I do like that. Huh. So uh, is it just us on the call today with Sarah on the Facebook Live? Oh, yeah, we have a few people here. Let's I can't see you. You know, it's June. You know, happy June. Everybody's doing the June thing. Yeah, everybody's excited. We have good weather here today, too, well, which is really nice. There's eight on. <laughs> eight of us. <laughs> I love it. Okay. It's an intimate group. We've well, had... What's going some... on? What, Tom? We had a question come up uh, yesterday, or Friday, rather, and this was my homework assignment. So... So I have it here. I think somebody did your homework for you, Liz. Yes, yes, they did. And I was grateful for it. I liked it. I'm trying to pull up the page on my phone. So the, 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 the question that came up was, if somebody leaves on maternity leave, will that affect your PPP loan forgiveness? And I'll take this whole article here and, and dump it in the uh, chat. But according to this, no, no, it wouldn't. If somebody leaves voluntarily, if somebody takes a voluntary leave of absence and they say here, like for example, maternity leave, um, that how do they, how do they phrase this? A loan forgiveness application creates a new exception with respect to the formulatic reduction of forgiveness. Specifically, if the borrower's FTEs were reduced with respect to employees fired for cause, which they don't define, employees who voluntarily resign or employees who volunteer request a and receive a reduction in hours. And if the borrower did not replace the worker during that period, then these reductions are not to be included in the calculation of the reduction to loan forgiveness, which seems like a convoluted, seems like there would have been an easier way for them to have said that, but it looks like it doesn't count against you. Um, while it's not clear, it seems reasonable that someone who is taking a voluntary leave of absence, uh, i.e. maternity leave, would be counted in this category, which means they would not be counted um, in the calculation of the reduction to loan forgiveness. So I don't know if, you know, there's more changes coming as we, we, we discussed the other day, but as the law is currently written, it wouldn't hurt you if somebody left for maternity leave. And the Senate is supposed to be back today, right? So hopefully they, there's they are. They are. Um, got a couple of other articles here. This was a pretty good one that summed up just the, the, the benefits a little more clearly. Some of the questions that we had yesterday or, or Friday, rather. Um, the yeah. pushing back the June 30 deadline to rehire workers all the way back to December 31st, which kind of begs some questions in my mind. If you were holding on to people trying to get to June 30, do you have to hold on to them all the way to December 31st, or do you reduce your headcount now and? Bring them back December 31st. Right. 
We need more detail. I'm not sure how we would answer that. That one's still, still really, really sticky. Not, not, not good info there. But it is good since they don't have an answer to that, that they're giving an entire another six months because my guess is, and Sarah's in the same boat I am, almost back to pre-COVID numbers this week. So I'm thinking that by the end of December, I mean, depending on what happens between now and then, of course, I would hope that we will be able to back up to our, our full, full numbers, our full FTE count. Well, we're sitting at right around 90%. Sounds like, Sarah, you're doing about the same. You're almost back. Tom, you said you just hit a big onslaught today, too, hitting June. June, June's looking a lot better. We're, you know, 75%, maybe a little better. That's awesome. And I know that we, we also had a bunch of people saying to hold off until June. And so now they're they're saying okay again uh our situation is just a little bit different we have to apply with the state each one of our counties has to apply with the state to open up to the next wave we have these different stair steps and uh, so different counties are are opening going to the second stage and when, when we get to second stage it's clearly written um house cleaning something instead of just residential cleaners it's written more in, in layman's terms so we're thinking but well, we're getting that bad um chalkboard lady again she's pretty pretty strong i'm seeing several people here sarah star starlene yeah uh, we're, we're coming back which one is the only wolf fish we have best one ever? A little too soon. Yeah, I, I'm I'm with you, Sarah. We we don't really know what's going to happen, and all of the dates are going to be off. We need to make sure and and track this really well because in five years we need to remember that this was craziness, right? That the reason why we had good months so late in the year. I mean, I'm sure we'll remember our bad months, no problem. But I don't want to do that. Go ahead, Tom. Sarah's making the comment that July is usually her slowest month. I mean, she's in Phoenix, and I guess a lot of a lot of rational people try to get out of Phoenix in, in in July, but probably people aren't traveling as much this July as as normal. So it might be a, a really good July. Yeah. So it looks like she's saying it's going to be good. Doesn't have the people canceling that normal. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what I was saying too. I think our numbers are just going to be skewed as far as what's what our good months are and what our bad months are this year. You know, we always uh, had a slowdown in the summer because of our teacher base. We have a fairly decent sized teacher base, but I'm wondering how that's going to be impacted this year because teachers have been gone have been off for quite a while now. So I don't know. We'll see. This article I was just showing you is 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 mentioning that uh, now this is Forbes and this came out this came out yesterday, came out Sunday. While there is optimism in Washington that the new bill will reach the pre reach President Trump's desk for signature, there's no guarantee of when or if this may happen. And until that occurs, the new and harsher harsher Treasury regulations issued on May 22 will dictate how the PPP loan forgiveness process works. So I guess a lot of people believe that that work form and the you know, fancy spreadsheet and all of that. I guess, I guess that is arduous stuff because they're saying here that the biggest problem with the new regulation is that we'll likely need a lawyer, accountant, and an advanced degree in mathematics to figure out how to calculate the forgivable portion of the loan. So, sounds like one of the things they're trying to do with the new regulation is make it just easier to do the calculation. Every, yeah. Everything seems to be going in the direction where 
you know, they want to make as much of this loan forgivable as possible. The, the banks want that. It looks like the government wants that. Certainly we as business owners want that. Who's going to be upset if those loans are forgivable, right? They do have one thing on there that sort of went in the face of that. Um, I'm trying. It was that before, if you weren't able to reach your numbers, that there would be a reduction in what was covered. But with this new... Um, the new one, if, if you don't spend at least 60% on payroll, nothing's forgiven. The way that right. the house version is written. Yeah. But for house cleaning businesses, I think we're safe because I'm not sure how you could spend, you know, more than 40% on stuff other than payroll. Yeah, but if you don't spend it all, you know, we have some people that have been closed and... Yeah. You know, not able to spend it. That that well, was the one I was. If you, got, if you got 24 weeks, though. That's true. Yeah. Now, this came out this afternoon at around 2 o'clock. So <laughs> it was updated, at, sure. uh, updated 20 minutes later. So this is hot off the press. That's... Uh, Mitch McConnell, he's uh, the guy that uh, runs the Senate, and says uh, Mitch McConnell will attempt to expedite the approval of changes of the popular Paycheck Protection Program aimed at giving small businesses more flexibility. McConnell is seeking to move the bill passed by the House last week by unanimous consent in the Senate if no senators raise objections to a notice to lawmakers, according to the aides, it sounds like it, that this is all real positive, according to McConnell, and you know a lot of the same stuff that we 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 we've talked about before. Does he say anything about uh, potential changes or anything like that? Well, Rubio had the concern about the 60%. If you know, if you didn't spend at least 60% on payroll, nothing got forgiven. But the other side of the argument is um, the House is not in session this week. So if they make any substantive changes, then it might be That's longer before they pass it. So there's some thought that they just might take it as is just to get it, just to get it passed. Better but, to get something passed. But nobody knows. Well, it's not like they haven't made changes like this one. They could do that later. That this could be pushed through, and then two weeks down the line, we could get another change. Sure. <laughs> Wouldn't shock me. It's happened before. That's the only thing. Security. The only thing that's a little bit different about it this time is there are people that are finishing up their PPP money. They're um, eight weeks are finalizing, I think, as early as, what was it, from the 5th or the 7th? Yeah, I think some people, their eight weeks was up Friday. Oh, Friday. Okay, mm -hmm. I didn't think it was until this week. Okay. So, and you got 60 days after that, right? 90 days? You got a good chunk of change. So there is still time, but... The... Other thing that we, we did here, we talked about, you know, the letter that you could send to your congressman, House of Representative member, senator, all the above about this uh, new law that uh, ISSA is pushing forward. And yeah, that was my homework that someone else did for me. I. Uh, Put your homework that somebody else did for you as a link <laughs> and clean business today. So if you go all the way down here to the end, you got your uh, ISSA clean start back to work tax credit. And this over here on the right, it shows you, gives you all the stuff that you need to do, make it really easy to send emails to your. Um, state representatives and so forth. 
Nice. So nice. Or, you can, or you can do it in Twitter or you can call them or all the above. I, I think uh, in our state, email was the easiest by, by far, actually. And this would be cool because this is like $25,000 per company. And if that company has multiple branches, it would be up to 10 branches or captured a quarter million dollars of tax credit that they can basically get their places cleaned, their offices cleaned for free if this became law. Based on what we saw Friday, it's a bill. It's only a bill and it's setting on Capitol Hill. <laughs> <laughs> only a bill. <laughs> I can't remember. And we'll have to look that up. Um, excuse me, Schoolhouse Rock flashback. Um, but you know, it's 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 in the consideration set. So if you want it to become a law, go to go to this link in Cleaning Business today and use the information on the right to tell your lawmaker that this is an election year and you would appreciate their support on this important piece of legislation. All right. So let's see if you can hear this. Uh, see if it's been play. Uh, while this is loading for me, I got a question for you. Somebody um, posted offline. Carbon monoxide alarm. Yeah. I'm sorry. The question is, can you hear this? Are you playing Schoolhouse Rock? Yeah, you can't, can't hear it. I can't hear it at all, no. Oh, it's too bad, Tom. You're missing it. He's only a bill. Right, let me talk him so I can hear. <laughs> Sitting on the steps of the Capitol building here in Washington. You remember him? He's so cute, Tom. All right, so here's the question. This is a question for you. Carbon monoxide alarm is going off at a home and the girls have headaches and feel sick. They, she let the client know about it. The girls are outside. I guess we should, we should say women. The women are outside right now. Um, what's the deal there? Do they air the house out for 15 minutes and go back in? Is it safe? Do they need to just leave for the day? They need to let the client know. They need to pack their stuff up and they need to go. All right. That's good. Thanks, Tom. I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna be wrong, you want to be wrong on the side of safety and caution. You don't yeah. know what the root cause of that might be, and the reason they have alarms for such things is they are you know carbon monoxide okay. is very deadly. Okay, good. And they were having headaches. That uh, that's not a good sign. Yeah, I would also make sure that they're feeling okay and feel like, you know, do they need any assistance? Do they need to, should they be driving? I don't know. There's a lot of questions that you might want to want to ask. Okay, I'm responding. Okay. I see a um, audio saying document everything. That's that's a good piece of advice. Yeah. Especially making note of the proactive measures you've taken in terms of making sure the client knows. I mean, well, well I guess there is no school. I was thinking you know, a kid comes home from school and just goes, like, I mean, there's so many the, the the client the client needs to know before they, they 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 go in the house. Hopefully, you can can reach them and have the discussion. Yeah. That is really odd. I mean, how often? I've never had it happen. No, me neither. Never. I've had everything happen. <laughs> or so you thought. Yeah. Now, if you haven't had that, I wonder what else, right? Yeah, I used to think I'd had everything, but no, I I found out since then that I haven't. 
I've never had. There was something that happened on, on this Facebook Live over the last couple of weeks that we were talking about. And it's like, that has never happened to me. <laughs> I, I feel like that. that happens kind of fairly regularly. Well, you were mentioning scabies. You guys had had a case of scabies like three different times or yeah. something. I've never yeah. had scabies. I mean, I mean, not, not yeah. personally, but within my company. <laughs> yeah, our, our company has never dealt with scabies, but at least to my knowledge. Uh, but we've also never had bed bugs here. And I know bed bugs is a really big deal in lots of places, but we've never had to deal with that. We have had some ferocious flea problems in the past. So we, wow. we cling to this one place that uh, or we wanted to clean this one place that we could not get rid of the fleece. We just couldn't get rid of them. And the 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 tenant actually ended up moving out. She couldn't get rid of the fleece either. And so yeah. Did we, I mean typically people who do pest control have ways of, of dealing with such stuff. Yeah, they, they did find, they got a pest control place to come in. Um, it looked like the flea problem was was maybe better for like three days and then fleas again. So she was like, nope, I'm moving. I don't blame her. I mean, it, you, how long can you live with fleas? Especially not to that degree. They're crazy. Like you walk, as soon as you walk in, they're just on your feet. Uh, that's scary. Yeah, the, so, life you know, cycle, the life cycle of the flea is an interesting thing, though, and the stuff that you have to go through to completely mitigate so they don't come back, it's, right. it's kind of involved. It's it's a multi-step process. Maybe yeah. that's another discussion. I, I remember yeah. that because that's a chapter. And that's, I was that's, just going to say that. I just saw that in the chapter. <laughs> yeah, that's in, in PHC. Yeah, it was actually really interesting. It's a good little graphic too, showing that. I wanted to say something about the document everything. Uh, Audra, I know that you were talking about, and the same as Tom, we were talking about the, um, the problem with the person on the phone, but I know somebody who started like their own personal blog about um, idle monies, PPP monies, just the coronavirus in general, what's happening every single day. And her accountant told her that that was the number one best thing that she did because her documenting like this person left, this person wants to come back, this person said they're, they're not going to, my business is down, four customers called today, blah, blah, blah. Just keeping track of all that stuff, um, it makes, makes it so that there's like zero, zero case against her for, because that, that supposedly is one of the ways that they're going to giving small businesses free. Saying, did you really need it? Did you really need the the, the loans? Um, and so her her doing that is really made a big difference. I'm like, oh, okay, I need to do it. I need, okay, do you see what Amelia says, Tom? Yeah. I feel able to log in. I can't even imagine why. Did you? Okay. Put the link up here, right here, Tom, and see if she can go through your link and get in instead of um, her going to modern cleaning and going out and see if she can go directly through your link. I also, I had a question real quick. I was talking to somebody today um, and she said she wanted to know with uh, the COVID-19 training, not with the PhD program, uh, what is the time limit on that? Is there a time limit on it? There still is, right? 90 days? 90 days. Okay, that's what I told her, 90 days. Is it going to be moving over to the new platform also where there will maybe be no limit or, you know? A, well, there's always going to be a limit. But, yeah, um, a much larger limit. The, the focus right now is on pH. Okay. So that's where most people have like the group purchases. I, I told her to, you know, probably didn't make sense to wait on COVID-19. Probably better to go ahead and just take that training. Yeah. 
Yeah, so um, hopefully, Amelia, you'll be able to go directly through this link that Tom is going to. And if you can't, tell us what happens when you when you go there. I've been having a weird IT problem. I've had three people in the last maybe week or so tell me that my uh, emails that they're sending to me are bouncing back for no apparent reason. Especially three in less than a week. I don't know what's going on with that. My I'll share my screen here real quick. I don't know if you can see that or not, but the link that I sent you will take you here. And if you go up in the top right where it says log in, it should let you log in. So try it, Amelia. And let's see what happens. when she hits that login button. I'm wondering, is it like you're using the wrong password or, you know, who knows? I had no idea. So, we've, created a, we've created a new mailbox for support for this. help at moderncleaning.com. So if it doesn't work, just send an email to help at moderncleaning.com. Explain what email you're trying to log in with. And if you have a screenshot of what it's doing when you're trying to log in, that would be helpful. But I can see where people are taking that class every day. So it's working for It's working for most people. I'm trying to get this sent out. Where people all feel sick still. It sounds like the carpet cleaner, what had happened was the carpet cleaner backed up to um, run his carpet cleaning. Oh, <laughs> yeah, and he was running his, running the truck. So are there, um, any, are there any small pets? Are there any canaries in that house? Gosh, I should tell her to check for pets. That's actually good, Tom. Poor thing. This poor gal has had a day from heck, I'll tell you. Uh, looks you know like how some days are just like that. Looks like Amelia was able to log in. Yay. Yay. Good. Glad to hear that. It's so weird. I wonder like some weird stuff like that happens. How? Why? <laughs> Good. I'm glad you were able to get in, Amelia. That's awesome. <laughs> Anybody else get any money today? I know somebody whose PPP money dropped in today, this morning. Well, before before we let this carbon monoxide thing go, yeah. whoever owns that carpet cleaning company needs to understand or manages it, needs to understand what happened today because they could kill somebody. Yeah. Because you're not, you know, I mean, that's, that's part, of the, part of the training. If you've... Especially and if, you, if you've got like a drug drive unit where you have to leave the engine running the whole time. I mean, the exhaust could be blowing, you know. I'm not sure what they did. I mean, they backed the truck into the garage. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, they did something really dumb. <laughs> yeah. And they left the garage door open. So I'm sure they're thinking that it's going to be safe. But if it's backed all the way up against. Yeah. I mean, you know, I know, but. You know, he'll, you know, the, the, the carpet person will kill themselves or kill somebody else or. And if I were the client, I would be pretty upset about this. You know how laid back I am. <laughs> huh. 
All right. Yeah, I told her she definitely needs to talk to that carpet cleaning company before something more desperate happens. I feel bad for her. She has just had the worst day, y'all. This would have been, she had three people in that house. This would have been her third, fourth, and fifth people going to ER. Actually, still might be if she ends up sending them. So she already had to send two separate people. It's just tough when you have six employees. <laughs> Five of them are ending up at the ER. Tough day. <laughs> look at the look at the bright side. The chances of sending anybody else is getting smaller. Every day. Oh, what do we got, Linda? Okay. Um, well, one of my ladies last week could not get to session three. I logged in for her. Her problem was she had not completed session two. Oh, although she thought she had. Today, one of my ladies could not get into session four. And it is telling her she did not complete session one. Ah, that's good to know. Karen, oh, got PPP two weeks ago and idle today. Yay! Raining. Yay! Congrats. I, I'm I'm assuming you wanted the the idol. Karen, I know there's a little we're going back and forth now a little bit more on people are saying whether or not they want the idol now that they have found out that interest begins accruing when you get the money, but Assuming you want it, yay! And even if you don't, yay that you got it. You can turn it back over. <laughs> You're not in limbo waiting anymore. So yes, you wanted it. Good. I'm glad. If you remember Friday, we explained that you could think of that interest as just like paying an insurance premium. You don't. Yep, you, don't feel, you don't feel bad, you know, at the end of the year because you didn't make any insurance claims. It's like a. <laughs> I paid for this insurance. I didn't wreck a car and nobody got hurt. What a waste of money. Yeah. Although I do know people that do complain about that, Tom, I got to tell you. Yeah. I've been play paying on my insurance for five years. Nothing's ever happened. I feel like it's a rip off. I've heard people say that more times than I can count. I guess it would probably be wise that they don't buy life insurance. Yeah, I guess. And really, if that's been their attitude around the auto insurance, don't let them buy you life insurance. I bought that life insurance policy for you and you're still here. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not thinking that's good. Well, the one person that I know of that's like, nope, I'm not doing that. That makes no sense to me. His mind is, uh, his mindset is, I don't need the money. I have enough money to to be managing any eventuality that comes along, I believe. So there's no reason for me to even hold on to this money and pay even the insurance of it. And I was like, okay, well, I'm not in that position. And I don't feel at all confident that I know it's coming. Um, I'm, I'm a little encouraged that I haven't seen a big jump back or even a little bit of a bounce back like from Texas who only closed for a very short time, right? They were open, 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 they closed and then they opened right back up again. We're not really seeing a big change in numbers there. So I feel a little encouraged. Yeah, you don't know what you know, worst case scenario might be. But if you've got like an abundance of cash and if you're not concerned about worst case scenario, the other argument that I would put forth is you don't know what the final rules are going to be. I mean, it looks like every other week, you know, Congress is discussing and most of it's on the PPP, but that doesn't mean they can't like make the rules more favorable on the idle as well. Um, we were looking something over the last couple of weeks that suggested and it used the term you'd be able to they make it easier to use the 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 idle funds for things like investments oh wow i i don't remember that that's awesome yeah, and it, i mean it was kind of in passing it was some congressman or something just stuff that you know they're they're bouncing around i mean you don't know what they're going to wind up with yeah, that's true. So I just want to, you know, 
be in the ball game. So if they change the rules in some way where, holy cow, I can't believe they're going to allow us to use those monies to do something we can't imagine right now. So, well, gee, I wish I'd have had it. So, like, you're thinking that there might be okay to buy a Ferrari then, maybe. <laughs> Not today. Not Not like that. No Ferraris today, y'all. You heard it here first, right? No Ferraris. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so so this this again, this is a, one of the um, uh, success mastermind members, and his 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 thinking here is that yeah, it could go in a more favorable way, but uh, we don't know what the way this is a thirty year loan right now, and he is not encouraged by the amount of money that the government is just like, okay, three trillion, here's another trillion and a half coming at you. All right. At some point in time, he he his thinking is they're gonna wake up <laughs> and be like, wow, okay, we gotta do something to fix this. What the heck did we do? They're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna sober up and it's like I didn't yes. <laughs> yes. That's his thinking is that the government's not just going to throw four and a half trillion dollars at us and go, eh, all right, <laughs> that they're going to, yeah, sober up and say, we need to like reel a little bit of that money back in or we need to make a little, we need to do something. And he's like, I don't want to be on the other side of that at all. Mm -hmm. And he does feel confident that he can afford to to manage whatever comes down the pike. So, okay, good for him. No, I'm, I'm happy for him. Audra, still very fluid. Yay. Good. Keep it. Let's keep it that way. Right? That's awesome. Man, I think it'd be awesome if everybody is. I, I know a lot of people are feeling, um, especially people that got PPP money and idle money, um, and the money is starting to build up in our accounts, right? Paying out with PPP funds. And so our money's not going anywhere. So people are feeling like, wow, my, my bank account's more bloated than I was expecting. But uh, I think a lot, a lot more people are like, yeah, that's nice. But what's, what's coming down the pike here? You know, what's going to happen? Well, Let's see. Let me see what my. Woo. Well, tomorrow we're going to have a really awesome special guest. Laura Bianchini from Moody's Insurance is going to be telling us what's happening at a number of different state levels that uh, we're pertaining to uh, COVID-19 and how that can affect our insurance. Um, some of you may know Laura. I mean, she's uh, actively involved in ARCC. Uh, Moody's is one of the few insurance companies that actually goes out and looks at the cleaning industry market that they want to, to, to serve. And so, I mean, it's her job to keep up with what's happening at a, at a state level. There's a handful of states that the state legislature is trying to force insurance companies to you honor business uh, interruption claims against you know because, because of COVID. And and most those, I mean all those policies basically are written in a way where you know if your office is blown away and that means you can't you know, conduct business that then we honor the claim. But if your customers aren't using your service because of, you know, a flood or something that it doesn't cover you. So typically most service related businesses see very little value in business uh, interruption. Um, I don't carry business interruption. Well, those will tell you, I insure against everything. everything. It's, it's, it's fairly useless. Being in a place where a hurricane goes through every other year and we lose business, and it's like, well, you know, did your business blow away? And is that the main cause why you didn't, you know, uh, why, why you suffered a loss? Well, no and no. Well, you get nothing. But 
if they do this, if the state legislatures are successful, there's a handful of states. Ohio is one of them, but she can tell you the others. It's really going to has the potential of messing up the insurance markets because they don't, they, they never calculated that risk. Their underwriters didn't consider it. So if insurance companies are having to pay out premiums for stuff that they never collected revenue to, to cover the risk, I don't know. Laura will explain all that to us. Yeah, it's going to be good. I'm excited to have workers comp in some states like like California. If somebody claims that they have, or not a claim, if if somebody contracts COVID in in California, they can file that as a workers comp claim, and it will be accepted and and with, with, with basically no questions asked. So that's really really weird and unprecedented. There you go, Tom. Good job. High five. Because typically, typically, you know, I get the flu, you know, maybe I caught it at work, maybe I caught it, you know, at the gym, who knows where I caught it. That doesn't, stuff like that doesn't typically equate into to, to workers' comp. So welcome, welcome to the new abnormal. Yeah. Um, so Amelia wants to know, are, are we supposed to be reporting what we spend our idle money on? My understanding is right now there is no report for that, but that we may, you want to keep those funds and that information clear because you might get audited. So it's not that you're going to be reporting on it, or at least right now, the way things are written, you're not going to be there's no report that you have to fill out, but, um, and remember this is money you're going to have for 30 years. So you wouldn't really be able to fill out, a, I guess you could, maybe they could have a yearly report or a monthly report, but currently there is nothing like that. Um, but you do want to keep, keep that information straight in case you get audited. What I would do though is the loan forgiveness application gives you guidance as to what records you need to be keeping. And this loan forgiveness calculator is a spreadsheet can be helpful in keeping your numbers together. So on a week by week basis, I'd be tracking like your and any other expenses that you want to be forgiven out of PPP funds. You don't want to, have to kind of recreate all that at the end. I, I'd be tracking that as I go. Especially for PPP. Right. But for idle, um, are you saying use the same form down for idle? No, or? I'm sorry, you talking about idle? Idle, not so much. Um, I'd read the contract because everybody's contract was a little bit different and make sure I wasn't spending the money in ways that, you know, I'm not supposed to. But and that's that's Amelia's next question is what what can we spend the money on? So um, like Tom said, everybody's contracts are a little bit different, but for the most part, what we're seeing is that there aren't a ton of of restrictions on that money. You can't use it to um, um, invest and. We don't know of anybody that has gotten an okay to for investment. What were some other things, Tom? Um, uh, expand. You can't expand, right? Yeah, you're yeah, not supposed to do acquisitions. Anything really on the, on your, your 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 balance sheet. You're not supposed to pay off debt. Oh yeah, pay off debt. But it's all there's this term. You know, money is fungible. So if you're covering. Well, you got your PPP. I'm assuming first you're going to use your PPP for that. But once your PPP is gone, I think that you can continue to use your idle for that. Is there a window in which you, when you can, you have to stop using your idle funds or do I have 30 years to pay payroll out of idle? Uh, well, I, I'm not positive, but what I have heard, I'm trying to remember I, I know that I heard this from a credible source, but I can't pluck out of thin air right now which credible source, but that this is a 30-year loan that you're going to have access to these monies, 
we are able to spend them on any anything that is a normal working expense over the course of those 30 years. Of course, it has to be paid back, right? But. So you're allowed to spend the funds on and yeah. you the money that you're making from cleaning homes that you would normally use to pay those bills to pay other things. So here's an example, because I, I had this in one of our MMA um, groups today, uh, last week. Uh, so she has credit card debt. She Right now she pays like $2,000 a month in credit card payments, not not the, the principal, that's just the payments. So of course she wants to pay off some of this credit card debt. So what she's doing is she's using her PPP money to pay her her payroll, and then she's taking the money that she normally would have put on payroll. So she's just taking that exact same amount of money. So she has a separate account that has her PPP money. So her payroll is whatever, $20,000. She's taking that same amount of money, $20,000, and she's putting it from her regular um, uh, uh, OPEX account, and she's paying um, credit card debt off with it. So that seems like it should be okay. Um, I, I, I'm not sure how that would not be okay. What do you think, Tom? I don't know. If you've got that separate money and it's in a separate account showing that that's where it's going, they're not, they're not auditing all of your accounts, right? They're auditing that money that comes in seems like it should be okay so i'll tell you what i would do if it was me okay if it was me i would wait until i got through the audit before i spent any of that money on any of those other things per that's what i personally do it's, i just don't want to muddy the waters it's a crazy amount of money that the sba sba pushed out in a unprecedentedly short amount of time uh, how they're going to keep score on all of this is still an unknown. So, yeah. Um, the other thing is, you know, talk to your, your, your CPA about, you know, how you're using the money. And, you know, they would, they're familiar with how your whole financial system is set up and how you're accounting for these funds. They should be able to help you develop a strategy to, to, to put them to work, too. Yeah, it's probably the best best thing to do for sure is talk to the experts who know <laughs> always right uh, your banker is also another good person to ask this kind of question about because your banker is the one that is deciding what gets approved or not well right? are, the PPP, are they idle i've learned if you try to talk to your banker about idle they got mm -hmm. i know nothing about idle yeah. yeah. No, I, I was talking specifically about the PPP. Okay. And I was talking about, so we're, we were talking about PPP, spending it on payroll, and then taking that money that you normally would have spent on payroll and paying off that debt. Mm -hmm. That would be a good question for your banker. Because your banker knows what they're looking for. And what accounts oh, they're, they're looking for. They're supposed to. Yeah. Right. They're at least coming up with a plan. You know, each bank is having to come up with their own plan for how they're doing it. They don't have an option there. They they are going to be doing it. Real quick, we're getting, getting tight on time, but here's an article I'll share that's recent that kind of gets into this whole topic. And you're right. I mean, it's... It's guaranteed by collateral if it's over twenty-five thousand. They're capping them at one hundred and fifty. The collateral is like tangible and intangible property, like inventory. Borrowers can't sell, lease, license, or transfer collateral without prior approval from the SBA. That's kind of interesting. Say it again. They can't sell. The loan is backed. 
by collateral of the business, which is intangible property like inventory and equipment, borrowers cannot sell, lease, license, or transfer collateral without prior approval from the SBA. Mm. So if you have a company car that you're looking to yeah. sell and you have an idle loan, technically by the contract that you signed to get that loan, that car is collateral. Exactly. That you need yeah. to ask their permission. Mm -hmm. Say a printing company wants to sell a printer and buy a new one. It would need written permission from the SBA to do so. If the old printer is among the items collateralized in the disaster loan. But we didn't list any assets. So, I mean, I'm, I don't know. Yeah, I'm confused by that. So. Did some of you guys list collateral on your assets? Did you list anything? I don't know of anybody that did. Do you, Tom? No, but theoretically they could ask for financial statements at some point in the future that had all your, you know, assets on it. Yeah. Collateral also can't be used primarily for personal, family, or household purposes. For those, for example, those with company owned cars that are also used for personal reasons could run afoul. But we didn't list collateral. I didn't see. Yeah, run afoul in what way? What does that mean? It would mean that the SBA felt that you were misusing assets, selling assets well, you didn't have the authority to. I wasn't even talking about selling it. That was just talking about driving it. Maybe if you're driving a company car every day, that might, I mean... I wouldn't overreact to this, but the whole the whole essence of this article is some of the some of the unintended consequences of of the idle funds. Yeah. Business owners okay. also need approval to reorganize, merge, consolidate, or change ownership of a business structure. Wow. Idle funds uh, can also only be used as working capital related to economic injury after January 31st. They can't be used uh, as capital for physical improvements. For example, according to Javier Martinez, a partner at the law firm, but, but for example, a restaurant hoping to use funds for an expansion or, or improvement to a building, patios, uh, drive through windows, plexiglass between booths, of the, let's say, wouldn't be able to do so. Okay. Anyway, we're almost out of time, but there's. Um, yeah, that's some pretty good information right there, though, Tom. Yeah. M maybe throw that link in the. Uh, is it a legitimate source? Yeah. CNBC. Yeah. Seems like. Hmm. Just curious since nobody that I know of. So, so let's see. People filed for economic the, loss, not physical loss. Of, I'm sorry. Liz, the essence of this is if the SBA says that you sold a piece of collateral that you weren't supposed to, they could say that you breached the terms of the loan and they could call the entire loan immediately saying, if you still owed them $145,000, they could say, we want, we want all the money now. Tom, are they um, speaking specifically to idle? Because Karen this, is saying- Yeah, this is exactly, this is specifically EIDL. Okay. This came out May 28th. So this was last Thursday. This is relatively new. Yeah, I'll put it in order. Okay, so we're um, in the home stretch here. Real quick, if you haven't taken uh, business today, you guys know the drill by now, right? Yep, yep. Go to clean business today over here on the right. Just email first name, last name, forward slash coronavirus.com. Excuse me, forward slash coronavirus dash downloads. I think I've done this enough by now. We don't have to do that. <laughs> um, modern cleaning. If you want to sign up for 
PHC, that's it, or, or the COVID class, either one. You know how those both work. Bang, bang. Class number four came out. Class number five is going to be coming out this week. Six already in the can. Seven, we'll have this thing wrapped up here in a heartbeat. Still uh, looking to get uh, moved over to the new platform. I think in an update today, we were shooting for, for, for Wednesday. So I'm, I'm hoping that's still at, if not Wednesday, it's going to be really, really soon. That's going to, going to be a nice uh, enhancement as well. Um, I still need like six people on our modern cleaning YouTube page. Oh, we, we didn't make it all the way there. Come on, guys. We need six more people. I said modern cleaning made central. I got 94 subscribers. If you guys haven't subscribed to Main Central yet, if I could, we get six more subscribers, we'll be able to get a user-friendly URL, which would be very friendly. Please, please, please. It's <laughs> more. I, love, I like that it'll be very friendly, Tom, that, that user-friendly email. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Tell your friends tomorrow come be here with us at five o'clock to hear Laura Biancini. She knows insurance inside and out. And there's a lot of special things that are happening in the insurance world because of COVID-19. Insurance is kind of a boring thing. I know it's not most exciting, but I can tell you managing your insurance well has a profound impact on how much money you make over the long run in your business. So it would be, it would be time well spent if you can make it. We'll see you tomorrow at 5. Y'all take care. Bye. Bye, y'all.